to find a microphone here. Well, it works. See what see what happens here. It, it, it's all the golden touch. As soon as I grab it, knows who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Check. <laughs> Did I wake you up? That's good. I need you woke up this morning. Uh, I Man, I y'all don't know. I, I struggle with messages every week. What do we need to hear? What, what are we needing? What words do I need to present to our congregation to encourage you, to stimulate you, to... Uh, Maybe to chastise you a little bit, you know. But I, I always want to know what it is that God wants me to wants me to preach. And I had a couple of sermons that I kind of come up with while I was off on vacation, and I was looking at them and working on them, and I just kept saying, "God, you just tell me which one of these to do." And so Saturday, you no know, Friday evening, I'm driving to La Mesa, and I call a lady, and we have a real short, brief conversation. And so there's where we're preaching this morning. It has absolutely nothing to do with what the other two <laughs> sermons were. When, when we got through talking, it, it, uh, it uh, came, came to me that this is what we need to talk about this morning. And uh, uh, the, the sermon title is, Are You Faithful? And our scripture, y'all notice we've done quite a bit back in the Old Testament here lately and may get some more from there, but I think all of God's word is beneficial to us. And so uh, if I would like for you to turn over to Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, chapter 7. We're going to read three little short verses, and they're just going to kind of get us started because we got verses all over everywhere, Okay. And we're going to go from the front to the back and a whole lot in between this morning. But it says, The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any of the peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But because the Lord loved you and kept the oath which he swore to your forefathers, the Lord brought you out by a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, therefore, that the Lord your God, he, or know, therefore, that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousandth generation with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let us pray, our most gracious God in heaven. <coughs> Father, we thank you today that you do keep your word, that your word is never changing, that your word is your word that you are a God of faithfulness, you are a God of love, that you are a God that cares for us and watches over us. We praise you today, O oh God, for all that you have done for us. Lord God, as I stand to present this word this morning, Father, chastise my heart. But Lord God, let your spirit fill me let it run over, let it pour out upon these people today. And Father, if your word should strike their heart today, may they be changed and be made more like you today. Father, I thank you for each and every person that you have assembled here today. We know that you are in charge and that this is who you wanted to hear this word today. Father God, I pray that your word will strike home, that it will encourage us, that it will rebuke us. Father God, mostly that you will be glorified. Father, we realize and understand how truly unworthy we are to deliver your word, to even hear your word, Lord. But you wish us be so. Father, just uh, thank you this morning for Miss Gloria, for her <coughs> decision to be obedient, to follow you in baptism, to show Amen. the world that she is not ashamed to be known as one of your children. Amen. Amen. Father, she accepted you as Lord and Savior, and she wanted to tell the whole world, and we thank you for that today. <coughs> Father God, I thank you for this church, for the five years that we have been here, for the 
things that we have seen you do in this congregation. We ask, Lord God, that you continue to bless for however long you desire us to be here, that we will be obedient and serve. We ask all this in your precious name. Amen. 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 As we look at our scripture this morning, and, and we're going to do a whole lot. Don't leave Deuteronomy. Don't lose your place there. We're going to do several there. But God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. He never changes. His love never changes. It is always there for us. It is always available to us. His word never changes. He is God. And God is faithful to us. And when God makes a promise to us, we know that promise is true. That promise is faithful because God is faithful. In uh, Deuteronomy 32, verses 3 and 4, uh, Moses says, For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock, he is, his work is perfect for all his ways are just. A God of faithfulness and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. God is faithful to you and I. God loves us as we read in that first verse. God doesn't do things for us because of who we are, because of what we have done, because of any accomplishments that we have made. God loves us because God loves us. Amen. Not because we're special people. We are special people because God loves us. Do you get the difference? Amen. He doesn't love us because we're special. We're special because he loves us. He is faithful to us and he will see to us and he will care for us and he will guide us and direct us. And as his faithful son, Christ also is faithful. Hebrews 3 and 6, for Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are if we hold fast our confidence and the boast of our hope firm until the end. God is faithful and therefore his son Jesus Christ is faithful. The love that they poured out on us cannot be taken away. It will not ever end. His love is there. And it's not a love based upon who we are. It's not because we're rich white Americans. Okay? It's not because of where we came from. It's not because of the great things that we have done, the mission trips we've been on, none of those things. God's love is faithful. Amen. No matter how deep the depths of depravity, that's a bunch of these, that you and I have fallen into, God is faithful to love us. God is always there for us. God is faithful to us even in spite of ourselves. 2 Timothy 2, 13, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. His faithfulness is not contingent upon our actions and behavior. His faithfulness is part of his being. Because he loves, he is faithful. That love never ends, so that faithfulness never ends either. Amen. And see, as Christians, you and I are to be faithful because we are little Christ. We are made in the likeness of God and we are to be faithful. Faithful. Let's go to Daniel. Great book. I love the book of Daniel and this is a story that you and I have all read many times and I hope I didn't leave my marker out of it. There it is. Daniel chapter 3. We'll look at verses 14 through 18 right quick. Let's look at this. It says, Nebuchadnezzar responded and said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, and bagpipe, musical instruments, okay, and all kinds of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made very well. But if you do not worship, 
you will immediately be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can deliver you out of my hands? Ooh, he thinks he's a pretty tough guy, don't he? He thinks he is God, that he is in control. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king, but even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. See, Nebuchadnezzar had never witnessed the power of God. Oh, he had heard stories, but they were myths, they were rumors. He had heard different things, but all that. Nebuchadnezzar really thought he himself was a God and that since he controlled most of the land that he was the most powerful God that there was because who else could overcome him? But he doesn't know God. But see, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, the three friends here, they're faced with the situation. They're serving God. They're obedient to God, and they are committed to God. They are faithful to God, and they know <coughs> that God is capable, that God is able to do great, miraculous, and marvelous things and deliver them from the pits of the fiery furnace. But they also know that God may not. But that does not matter. Their faithfulness is not contingent upon what God is going to do for them. Their faithfulness is because they are faithful. Because they love God, they know God, and they want to serve God and honor God, and it does not matter what trials and tribulations and troubles come into their life because of honoring God, they are going to honor God. None of those other things matter. And this is the faithfulness that you and I need to have today. Galatians 5 and 1. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. We are to be faithful to God just as God is faithful to us because we are to be imitators of God, are we not? Amen. We are to be imitators of Christ. We are to be faithful. Deuteronomy 5, 32 and 33 puts it this way. Way back in Deuteronomy again. So you shall observe to do just as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you. We are to be obedient to God. We are to do what God has told us. We're not to veer off this way. We're not to veer off that way. And when he's talking about the right and the left, he's not talking about the Republicans and the Democrats. He's talking about following God. We are to be on that straight and narrow line that only God can give to us. We are to follow the path that he sets out before us, and we are to be faithful to God no matter what the circumstances come our way. See, Miss Gloria. She's obedient this morning. She's walking down that path by being an obedient follower of Christ by doing the things that he commanded, the example that he set for us and preaching her first sermon and declaring publicly her allegiance to Christ. In spite of whatever happens, in spite of what the world may say to her, in spite of what may come her way, she is going to be faithful to God. You and I need that faithfulness in our life today. Yeah. But see, we got a problem in our world today. There's no sense of commitment in our world today. And it's not a new thing. This has been going on forever. Go back, if you will, 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going to read verses 20 through 24. Another story that I hope you're very familiar with. So Ahab sent a message among all the sons of Israel and brought the prophets together at Mount Carmel. Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people did not answer him a word. 
They didn't want to make a commitment. They wanted to wait. They wanted to see which side was, who, who was bigger, who was stronger. Let's, let's have some information here. Let's be non-committal about anything. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Now let them give us two oxen and let them choose one ox for themselves and cut it up and place it on the wood, but put no fire under it. I will prepare the other ox and lay it on the wood and I will not put a fire under it. Then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. And all the people said, that is a good idea. We're going to sit back. We're going to wait. We're just going to see what God will do. And then we will decide whether to follow God. That ain't the way it works. Amen. We need to follow God. Amen. It doesn't matter what God does in our life. Does God provide all of the millions of dollars for you? There's no sense of commitment in this world. We're sitting back. We're waiting to see what God's going to do. And if God does what I want him to do, then I'm going to follow God. But if he don't do what I want him to do, I'm going to go over here and follow somebody else. There's no sense of commitment. We're all hedging our bets. We're all trying to, you know, play the odds against everything. There is no sense of commitment. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. We need to trust God with all we got. Yes, he's given us a mind. Yes, he's given us a, a brain to think about things. But sometimes God wants us to go somewhere and do some things that don't really make good sense. And we need to be committed to follow God no matter what, no matter how much sense it makes. Because in the end, God's plan is far better than anything you and I could come up with. Amen. Amen. See, there's no commitment today. There's no commitment to a job. We come in, we go to work for a guy, the boss trains us, he brings us up, he has plans for us, we're, he's depending on us, and oh, somebody down the road offers us $10 a week more, we're out of there in a heartbeat, aren't we? Or vice versa, we go to a job, we work, we put our heart into it, we put our soul into it, and that boss says, yeah, I don't need you, I can hire somebody younger than you for a lot less money that week, and, and they send you down. There's, there's no sense of commitment in our world today. There's no commitment to, to marriage or in marriage, is there? Oh, I don't, I, I, you know, I kind of like this person. I want to live with this person. We're going to share things together, but I'm not going to commit to be married to put up with them no matter what comes my way because, you know, somewhere down the road, I might find somebody that looks, you know, a little better looking or a little nicer or got more money or whatever. I might, I might want to change. So I, I don't want to make that commitment. Or we do get married. We're sitting here and, and you know, well, you've had you know two kids, three kids. You're kind of getting broad in the backside. And I think I'll go find somebody younger and better looking and do. You know, there's no sense of commitment, and so we wind up with divorces. We wind up with uh, couples living out of wedlock. We wind up with all these different. There's no sense of commitment to love. There's no sense of commitment in our schools today. I, you know, I'm serving on a school board, and I see people that will come in, and the first time that a teacher says something that, oh, they just really don't really like, what are they going to do? They're going to take their child, they're going to transfer to the next school because they got near buildings, they got fancier facilities, they, they won the state championship last year, and I want to be part of that. And so, you know, it's just a so much better deal. Teachers have no commitment to the school. They come in, they spend a year, they get the kids involved, they, they, they begin to develop a relationship and the kids are really thinking this is going to be great and they're thinking of all the things you're going to do. And, oh, they head off to another school district because they offered them a little more money or a little better facilities. There's no sense of commitment anywhere. There's no sense of commitment to our churches today. None whatsoever. It's Oh, the preacher doesn't wear the kind of clothes I think he needs to wear. He doesn't preach the sermons that I think he needs to preach. He doesn't. The music is just not up to par. I mean, golly, that that guitar player just keeps a banging, and I just I can't stand it, you know. And and, I, and that that lead singer boy, she's got the highest pitched voice, and she's always a half step off time, and 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 about a quarter pitch off of. 
key and oh, it's just driving me nuts and I'm gonna go somewhere else and something better. The pews are too hard, the air conditioner's not set right. We find every excuse in the world to go church hopping, don't we? Amen. There's no sense of commitment to a church. Amen. Preachers are the same way. They're in here, they're preaching to you God's word. They're telling you how you need to behave and how they need to behave and how oh, all these different things need to be going on. And then, oh, the bigger church down the road with the nicer building that pays another $100 a month is uh, God's calling me down there. There's no sense of commitment in our world. We don't have a commitment to tithe. We don't have a commitment to serve. We don't have a commitment to attend church anymore. We don't have that sense of commitment because our commitment is to ourself. We're looking to ourself and we put ourself first and it's what am I going to get out of it, not what is what can I put into it. There is no sense of commitment. God loved you in spite of who you are. God made a plan of salvation to give you life everlasting for all of eternity, and we're going to sell that for a few months of prosperity <coughs> for a couple of years of easier life here on earth. There's no sense of commitment, and we as Christians are need to be committed to serve God. God, we need to be like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. We don't care what God's going to do. We're going to serve God. We don't care what circumstances come our way. We don't care what things are going on in the world. We don't care the things the world brings to us because we know God's going to be there with us. Amen. But see, we have been warned about this. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 5, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. But you, but you be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. If God has called you to serve, come and serve God. If God has called you to be a member of this church, come and be a member of this church. If God is calling you to go do a work somewhere, go and do the work. Don't make your service and your work and your attendance and your tithe and your love and your anything else contingent upon what God has blessed you with this week. Amen. Amen. You do those things and God will provide. Amen. God wants to bless us. But first and foremost, he wants us. He wants our heart. He wants our commitment to him. He wants our faithfulness to him no matter what the circumstances. Amen. We are to be committed to God. It's Examine your life today. Stop and look at yourself today. Think of yourself today. Are you as faithful as God? Oh, woe is me, I am not. We look to our circumstances and we think, well, God, if you'll just give me a, a, a little more money, then I'll serve you, Lord. God, if you'll just give me a little more time. <laughs> I prayed that prayer one time. God, if you just give me a little more time, I'll come and serve you. You know, I'm thinking he's going to help me to get money where I can hire guys to do the work for me so I can take off and go do different things. Nah. No, he put me out of business, caused me to go bankrupt, and I had lots of time on my hands because I had no job. And he put me into full-time ministry, and he's kept me in his ministry ever since. But I figured out I'm only faithful to God. Because God has been faithful to me and God has always provided for me. Amen. And I will be faithful to God. <laughs> it ain't going to turn out the way you want it. But you examine your heart today. Are you committed to God as long as God does what you want? Or are you going to be committed to God in spite of what the world brings your way? Are you going to be faithful to God's word? 
Are you going to be obedient to what he's called you to do? Are you going to fulfill his commands? Are you going to be faithful? No matter what? Or are you going to ride by the seat of your pants, be washed out by every wave and every wind that blows, hopping from church to church to occupation to here to there, are you going to be faithful to God and go where he needs you to go? I will be faithful here as long as God wants me here. And the day that he tells me to go elsewhere, I will go elsewhere. But I am faithful to God. And I have made that commitment to be faithful to you. Are you making that commitment to God today that whatever God has for you to do whatever way that manifests itself are you obedient to God or are you telling God what you want him to do and if he does it then you'll, then you'll honor him honor God <coughs> honor God would you bow with me as we pray most gracious father Lord God, I think I've maybe stepped on some toes this morning. I know I've stepped on mine. God, give us a sense of commitment today. Help us to recognize that your love for us is not contingent upon what we have done, but it's because of who you are. And that, Father God, we are to honor you and serve you for who you are, not for what you can do for us. Because you are God. Father, if there's anyone this morning that needs to come to you, that needs to recommit their self to you, that needs to begin with the act of salvation, that step of salvation, and commit their life to you. Or, Father, they've just kind of been turning to the right and the left. They need to come this morning and get back on that straight and narrow. God, we trust you today to work in their heart. Give them the courage to step out. Father, whatever is on somebody's heart this morning. I ask this in your name. Amen. If God's speaking, you better come. You better come. Would you stand, please? I have decided.